welcome to one more episode of chess with the chess course and the lesson for now is double attack in the last session we had seen double attack by knight the knight four and here we shall examine examples from double attack coming from other pieces in the form of queen rook bishop pawn and even king so basically like a double attack results when you know like two pieces are being attacked simultaneously and both cannot be saved the attack also comes when a mate is threatened with a with an attack on another of the chessmen so like opponent does not have much resource to save both let us see few illustrative examples of double attack white starts with e4 black replies e5 knight to f3 black defends the pawn knight to c6 white moves bishop to c4 black plays bishop to c5 the ducopian opening or the italian game white plays c3 with the help of taking control of the d4 square black finishes his development on the king side moves his knight to f6 and now white goes as per the plan d4 and here now the correct move is the capture of the pawn it is like e takes d4 but here black airs and moves his bishop to b6 this is not correct this now allows white to gain material advantage white now captures the pawn on e5 and it's like again you know defended by the knight on f3 so to maintain parity black has to play knight captures e4 everything is equal in fact now black is attacking the f2 square with lot of threats like bishop captures f2 or knight captures f2 on knight 4 but like white is not afraid of that simply moves this queen to d5 and what do we find a checkmate threat on the f7 square simultaneously with an attack on the e4 knight black like can temporarily go in for bishop captures f2 check but that is short lived after king e2 he needs to save the checkmate threat which he can do like by castling but then he loses knight so this is an example of a double attack in the opening a pitfall in the duco piano moving ahead let us now examine a double attack in the french defense e4 e6 inaugurating the french defense this happened in a match between england and france where and the french team playing black went on to reply with e6 went on to win the game and that's why we got the name as french defense a solid opening repertoire for black against the e4 opening of white very popular white now normally plays d4 gets lot of space advantage and now black counters this with d5 challenges the pawn on e4 white moves is knight to c3 and now black plays knight f6 putting one more pressure on the e4 pawn white nullifies this attack with bishop g5 pinning the knight now black plays d captures e4 knight captures e4 knight b d7 so this move basically like gives support to the knight on f6 so that pawn structure of black will remain intact white continued his development knight f3 black removed pin bishop e7 gets ready for castling that's a good strategy and now since he has removed pin he is also now threatening to win a piece knight captures e4 previously he was not in a position to capture that but since now he has removed the pin the queen is no longer in danger the queen on d8 and that is why you know like black is threatening so white now plays knight captures f6 black replies knight captures f6 and white also gets ready for castling by playing bishop to d3 black now castles 0 0 and white plays queen e2 so now he has option of castling on both the sides normally the player playing french is worried of the development of 
the light colored bishop basically the french bishop on c8 and this he wishes to develop you know like very quickly but since you know he has like committed to e6 on the first move development of this bishop takes time so now here black plays b6 with the idea of developing bishop via b7 and you know putting pressure on this diagonal but this is an error basically in this position he should have like gone for c5 this was a much needed move this is normal in french you need to challenge the d4 pawn with c5 but this move b6 you know uh, the idea of developing the bishop on c8 backfired on black white now quickly brought about a double attack with bishop captures f6 bishop into f6 and now we see queen to e4 threatening mate on h7 as well the unprotected rook on a8 and black resigned our next example in double attack is in the philidor's defense opening this opening arises after e4 e5 knight f3 d6 so black defends this with uh, d6 of course uh, an opening which is passive but really solid and you know there are a lot of um, masters who are great exponent of philidor they have put in lot of new ideas one of the prominent is our indian grandmaster dibendu barwa had a fantastic result from the black side of philidor white now normally plays this liberating move d4 threatens like d captures e5 wants to capture on e5 and when black replies d captures e5 he can first spoil the castling right queen into d8 check and then king into d8 he can also win the pawn with knight on knight captures e5 so to avoid all this black moves is knight to d7 basically called the hanam variation of philidor made famous by a major name major hanam so this variation is credited to him white now moves is bishop to c4 two fold it's like development completing development getting ready for castling and bishop also aims at the weak f7 square now he intends to move his knight to g5 in this position so that f7 can be attacked twice and now here black made an error worrying about the ng5 thrust he moved his bishop to e7 this is not correct this is a pitfall in philidor you have to be aware of this wary of this the correct defense as i will show it later on but let us see how black lost material in this he continued d captures e5 and now black here basically has two options of capturing he can like just let me go back uh, d captures e5 and now he has like two choices in this position he can play e captures d5 well in that case here the double attack will come through queen d5 as can be seen the queen attacks the f7 pawn and knight also now has means an attack on e5 pawn it was defended by the knight on d7 but with queen joining on d5 there is an attack on e5 pawn 2 and here black is not in a position to save both both the threats so he loses material let us examine what happens if you know after d takes e5 he had played knight captures e5 well in that case here white can still win a pawn he can just exchange knight captures e5 after d captures e5 double attack comes from queen on h5 so what do we see here there is queen is threatening to capture the f7 pawn with support of his bishop as well the queen is threatening to win the e5 pawn 
so this is one of the pitfall a player playing philidor has to be aware of from the black side here like when you know bishop c4 was played let us just go back to this position and bishop c4 is played then in that case what black can do is not to worry about ng5 you can just move c6 this is very good move and now here nothing to fear about ng5 for example if ng5 comes well you know like you can just defend this with knight h6 and let you know white continue queen h5 putting one more attack on f7 but nothing to worry g6 and everything is okay for for black in this position so these are the ideas we have seen let us now conclude our uh, learning of double attack through uh, an opening pitfall in the Ruy Lopez opening. Ruy Lopez starts with e4, black replies e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5. Inaugurating the Ruy Lopez, this is one of the oldest opening named after the famous Spanish clergy Ruy Lopez and uh, he popularized this idea well ahead of his time. So what is the plan of bishop e5? Very simple. The knight on c6 is the defender for pawn on e5. Eliminate that defender and win the pawn. That is simple idea. Of course, they are, like it is uh, normally white would not like to part with the Spanish bishop. He also plans to, you know, like to castle quickly and then at appropriate time capture the knight on c6. Here now black plays a6 ignoring the threat is putting a question to white what do you want to do with your bishop whether you would like to capture the knight or whether you would like to retreat and like if now white tries to win a pawn say bishop into c6 this is not correct after d into c6 knight captures e5 black can bring about a double attack with queen e4 attacks both the knight on e5 as well the pawn on e4 say after knight retreats to f3 black can regain his pawn queen captures e4 check and now white will lose castling rights after queen into e2 black can just go ahead with queen captures e2 king captures e2 and now you know he gets an advantage of double bishop a good position and uh, a, a very playable game so this is what we see uh, of double attack in the Ruy Lopez opening I hope you have understood all the four examples I have uh, presented here we first saw double attack in the Italian game the Giuco Piano opening then later on we examined the French defense and then we examined the Hanam variation in the Philidor's defense and now concluded with the Ruy Lopez. Now the plan for you is to go and solve the test positions that follows in this chapter from the book. You will start with part one, six problems and then later on like when you feel confident enough, come back to the same chapter and then solve part two and part three. We stop here for now and I will be back with the solutions to the test positions on double attack. Bye for now.